Well, joining me now from Khartoum is Issam Abu Hasabu. He's a senior member of the Forces for Freedom and Change, which have directly been negotiating with uh, the Military Council. In Washington, D.C. is human rights advocate Azaz Ashami. And in New York is Suleiman Baldo. He's the director of the Africa program at the International Center for Transitional Justice. Good to have you all on the program. Issam Abu Hasabi, is this finally good news? Well, we hope so, yes. I think it is going to be good news as far as I can tell. Um, the session is going on up till now, and uh, it's not only wishful thinking, but we've worked hard, very hard, to reach this stage. Let's hope that the coming few hours will, uh, will give us uh, what we've, we have expected so far. What's the power dynamics like? Ultimately, yes. As you're sitting with them and talking to them, is it clear that the Transitional Military Council truly calls the shots still and that power is theirs to give to you? Um, no, I think the, the, the guiding principle is that it's, it's a mutual uh, interest that we have agreed. One of the guiding principles of the draft of the agreement was that both parties will consider the venturing into uh, a period of, of mutual understanding, of mutual, mutual commitment. So uh, I don't think it's the power of, of the TMC, the Military Council, to give to us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more of um, understanding and evaluating a situation that will take more than um, uh, one man show. Uh, um, I see. That, that there is no such uh, legitimacy of one party, that both of us, the military council and the, the civilians, have to consider the, the, the period as mutual responsibility. So it's not about uh, giving or taking mm -hmm. uh, power. Yes, uh, the whole question is about the shift of, of the balance of power between the two parties. But uh, uh, we have reached uh, a stage that we think we understand fully the commitments and the responsibilities of this period. Okay. Azaz Shami, our guest in Khartoum, who's involved in this process, is optimistic. Are you as optimistic? Not at all. And um, uh, it's quite hard for me to see why he is so optimistic about that. Uh, first of all, from whatever we've seen since this a very bare minimum agreement that they agreed on last week. We haven't seen any actions on the part of the TMC that shows that they are going to be relinquishing any power of any sort. One of the major demands that the people on the street had was basically to have accountability for the crimes that happened in Khartoum. Though it's very limited in its scope, and it's only centralized in, in the elite area, but even that uh -huh. one, Al uh, Burhan already uh, said they already have done an investigation investigation, um, uh, and at the same time denied having any responsibility. Uh, then uh, Hemeti on the other side saying that we found other people. Uh, all that while their uh, spokesperson statement on the 13th of June is still alive on, on the net, him saying that, yes, we did order the dispersing of the, of the protesters, mm -hmm. but something gone wrong, and we're sorry about that. Okay. So uh, it's, it's quite interesting to me to see how the people in Sudan see that. Right. It would be better for FFC just to, to be very um, uh, true to itself and com like just confess that they were forced to this agreement instead of like trying to sell it to us. I uh, because I don't think it's uh, any one of us is buying that. Okay, we're going to get a response from Issam in a moment. But let me ask Suleiman Baldo, using the example of the killings of the protesters, it was really terrible. Isn't it an indication, perhaps, that these opposition leaders and the protesters can't really trust the Transitional Military Council when they're saying, well, as Azaz said, well, we looked into it and guess what? We found that we're not to blame for people being shot dead and dumped into the Nile. Is this a Transitional Military Council that you can trust? Let's take a step back uh, and look uh, on what is uh, making the Military Council members tick. Uh, let us remember this of the commanders of Sudan's uh, security and sec uh, security and defense sector agencies. 
National Police, National Intelligence Security Service, the Army Rapids of Forces. We are talking about transitioning Sudan from 30 years of mass atrocities, war crimes, crimes against humanity in Darfur, in all conflict areas, South Kurdufan, Blue Nile. And what happened in Khartoum on the 30th of June and before that, since December 2018, is a form of unlawful killing beyond the, uh, the rules and laws of Sudan and international treaties to which Sudan uh, is party. Therefore, it adds to a long legacy uh, of uh, criminal conduct for which the military council and the heads of the security and defense agencies uh, are trying to shield themselves. This is a primary consideration mm -hmm. in the calculation. It's not just about the investigation mm -hmm. uh, into the killing of protesters on June 30th. The other motivation, I would say, is to preserve the autonomy of the security and defense agencies that they have obtained under 30 years of the regime of Omar al-Bashir at the level uh, of the national economy. During these three decades, security agencies have benefited for, from more than 70 percent of the expenses uh, of the national budget. However, they were allowed to keep their revenue. Most of the agencies, with the exceptions, perhaps, of the customs, national customs are part of the national police, they manage the revenues from this economic power uh, away and off the budget, of the national budget. Okay. The security and defense sector control this, right. and the military members okay. of the sovereign council are going to fight tooth and nail also to preserve that autonomy and okay. the autonomy of the Okay, so, so, so two, two, issues. Right. two interesting and perspectives here. Yeah. Okay, interesting. so two threads there, right? So, Suleiman, you've, you've got two threads there. On the one hand, on the security side, and on the other hand, in terms of how, power, how much these people are invested in the old system and retaining their privileges. Isam Abu Hassabu, you're outnumbered here because the other two guests are extremely cynical of this deal and skeptical. They're hopeful. They want things to work, but they're asking many, many questions, and these are legitimate questions, you would agree? Yes, definitely I agree that these are very much legitimate uh, questions, very much practical, very much uh, cautious. Uh, but uh, it's, not, it's not, as I said earlier, it's not about wishful thinking. It's about an agreement, you know, that it, there has been this contentious relationship between the two parties, between the TMC and, uh, uh, and the FFC. And it's probably, as I said earlier, uh, um, uh, uh, yani a matter of, of shift of power. But we have an agreement that was proposed by the mutual uh, or the joint proposal by the AU and uh, Ethiopia. So we have, we have this on ha our hands. We have to work on this. I, it's not about indicting or, 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 or clearing anybody um, or, or, or uh, pardoning them. It's about uh, looking at a map that, that, uh, that is very, very meticulously complicated. Okay, we but, have to, we have to Islam, sorry to cater interrupt you. for listen, these there's, details. There's about a three or four second to, delay between us. On what we have on our right. hands. Yeah. There's about a three or four, four second delay between us, so this might get a little bit messy. So my, um, my, my uh, extreme apologies for interrupting. However, you're saying it's not about indicting or pardoning, but at the very least, don't have these people in government. At the very least, if somebody is accused of a crime, if somebody is accused of atrocities in Darfur or even very recently in Khartoum, at the very least, you don't want them as part of this rotating three-year-long governing council. Just let them stay at home in their pajamas. Why should they be leading the country? Then we shouldn't have sat with them in the first place. I mean, the FFC chose to sit and negotiate through the mediator. So uh, unless we, we go on, unless we go on with this um, pragmatic uh, attitude, mm -hmm. then it's a game of, 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 uh, of, of uh, Tom and Jerry. You know, we cannot, we cannot really be serious and sit and, and discuss matters of, of, of justice, of peace, of, 
uh, of the future of the country. And then in the middle of, 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 of the road, we stop and say, but these, these guys are not the suitable ones to sit in and, and share power with us. Azaz? It's, it's, okay. It's, okay, so let's a get a response from Azaz. Okay. I think okay. we need to go on all okay. the way. You believe and you need to be pragmatic. Yeah. Okay, Azaz? Okay, this is, okay, I don't know where to start with this. Um, first of all, I think the reason the FFC had to sit in this negotiation, this ill fate uh, with zero commitment on the part of TMC is because they did series of mistakes leading up to this moment. So it's not the pragmatic thing. It's actually the best they can get. This is one. Second, the, the TMC, as Dr. Suleiman said, is an extension of the NCP, of the al-Bashir regime. Ironically, most of the parties uh, making up FFC had deals at some point with the Bashir government and fell out of it because they were they were they did not get what they were promised because they were uh, found out that they were played out and so it's really interesting that the same people and the same parties who had made deals with this government before I, like miraculously now think this same government will ever stick to the end of the deal whatever that deal is we haven't seen anything by the way it's very 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 bare minimum what we see now on the uh, dynamics of the news for us as Sudanese citizen is the TMC making all these these, like sovereign decisions, uh, appointing people to new offices, uh, moving diplomats from one position to the other, making all these, calling all the shots, and at the same time, the FFC is just being wishful and helpful, like acting like, oh no, we're the bigger one, we're going to do that. But actually, I don't see them having any power to this. Let's okay. look into the recent statements by the TMC head. Burhan mm -hmm. literally said that they're, they're going to have their military uh, uh, soldiers in cities around civilians until their uh, end, uh, the governor uh, their terms is is ended so that's not a mm -hmm. civilian led Right. Again, and also they didn't tell us what is this sovereign council going to have. We hear from the TMC that they can veto the cabinet nomination. Well, okay. so, apparently okay. we're not so in a let's civilian So let's ask Issam. the fact that they said, "Hey, we we have to have a military commander in charge for the first 21 months." That's the first thing we need to do. You have no qualms about that? We do, of course. But again, I, I'm sorry I have to repeat what I've already said, but this is a critical situation where you have to be pragmatic, where you have to, to get what you can really get. This is a very critical situation. Um, um, again, I, I, I think I think that unless unless we get the final agreement in a few hours' time and, and, and look into it, we cannot predict what what is uh, uh, what we have gained and what we have lost. Um, we are guarded by by um, a document that is the proposal uh, uh -huh. of the settlement and. Uh, its articulations are, are clear, and uh, there are uh, guiding principles in, in, in this agreement. Right. Uh, one of them is the, the guarantor of the AU and the resolution number 854. I, I, I mean, it's a critical situation. Yes, we have okay. to, okay. We I have to get go Suleiman through Baldo. it, okay. um, but okay. sit back and, okay. and, and reluctantly. Okay. Re reluctantly deny everything, that's not right. No, we're unpacking it, right? So there's an agreement and we're unpacking yeah. it. And we're asking if this is the best deal to bring about peace and a transition to democracy. Suleiman, yeah. Suleiman Baldo, what are you most skeptical about with regards to this deal? I'm not skeptical. I'm not an optimist. The freedom and change forces come to the table not as freedom and change forces, uh, that is to say, political and civil society actors. They come propelled by deeply rooted Sudanese population revolution in which all sectors of the society have uh, participated and they have mandated freedom and change forces to represent their aspirations. What the Sudanese people want is dismantling of the legacy of 30 years of repressive rule of Omar al-Bashir and all the instruments and the systems and the networks 
that have been introduced of repression, of war crimes. It's a, a violent system meant mm -hmm. to protect the interests of a particular political okay, constituency. But, so, but Suleiman, also, okay, so the counter argument, the Suleiman, the counter argument is that so they are so deeply invested in the state, in the money, and as beneficiaries of all the architecture of Sudan, that you can't get rid of them. If you try to get rid of them, they'll bite back in a very this repressive way. So you need to work with them and, and transition to democracy. That's the argument. This is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the best chances for this agreement, when we have it to, to succeed, is the protection of the population around it so that no one, whoever that person or entity is, is allowed to retreat from the aspirations of the people, mm -hmm. dismantling a system of repression, of massive corruption, and of atrocity crimes accepted without accountability. There has to be real serious reform, and the freedom and church and chain forces are the guardians of these aspirations. If they fail in that uh, assignment, mm -hmm. they will be abandoned. But the there's a suggestion, Suleiman, there's a suggestion from Islam that by trying to engage in accountability at this moment in time, it fiddles with the pragmatism and makes things difficult because you can't put people on trial when you're trying to stabilize the situation. That's the suggestion. Re address that for us. Well, they dropped it um, all together. They dropped the whole accountability question. Hmm. Okay, Suleiman, have a go so, and then Azaz, Suleiman. Uh, yes, uh, for me, uh, this is not a, a matter that can be settled and handled overnight. It's not about the here and now. It's about what is our plan for the three years of the transition? What is our plan for safeguarding the objectives of the people's uprising? It's not about the political agenda of the freedom and change forces. It's about the agenda of change mm -hmm. and of dismantling of a system of corruption and of repression and holding people accountable criminally and economically for the massive theft of the resources of Sudan. Right. This cannot be done overnight. It has to be through very patient and very strategic work of freedom and change forces. And this is the challenge facing them. Mm -hmm. If they go into the intricacies of day-to-day -day, uh, politics and power play with the military, we are going to step into the wrong footing. Okay, no. What we need is more of a strategic okay. thinking. I, and that's understood. Really Got preparing it. for the real Azaz, Azaz, if, if you were given executive privileges here, if you were given more power than Omar al-Bashir had at the height of his powers, at this moment in time, what would you do to put Sudan on the true road to democracy? What, what would you do differently to what's already been done in this power-sharing deal? I'll go back to before June 3rd and see uh, uh, and inject some pragmatism into FFC to sign that agreement then and instead of waiting and, and make it dipped in blood like now. Uh, it's very hard for me to take this as pragmatism. Uh, this is not pragmatism, that you're succumbing to power and pressure. Let's call it what it is, because when you walk into a landmine, knowing it is a landmine, you will be less prone to be blown up. But when you walk into a landmine thinking that it's a goalie, beautiful garden, you're going to be stripped to pieces. This TMC has zero interest in fulfilling the end of its, its, its agreement. Today, most of the videos that have been leaking since yesterday, since the Internet came back, we see people in official uniforms hitting people, terrorizing them to say which rule you want, military or civilian, Madania or Askaria, and terrorizing them. If their own ranks and file don't think that Madania should stand a chance and they are willing to kill for it, I cannot trust their heads mm -hmm. and their superior. Let's face it, this agreement will not bring us any stability. We're going to be dragging our feet, they're going to be dragging 
stopping and stalling and give us bits and pieces. And as to what the agreement holds, I'm sure there's no surprises. The agreement was very simple. It was bare minimum. It was bare. So I don't think anyone in FFC should see any, any uh, surprises. What's happening now is turning that agreement into a, a legal form and into a legal uh, language. But the essence of it is not new. So I'm sorry, if someone in FFC does not know what the agreement mm -hmm. entails, that means that even the transparency within themselves is it's quite flawed. But there is no surprises. The deal says simply that the TMC is going to have the 20 first uh, first 21st uh, 21st uh, month and then uh, the civilian during that time in which they're going to have uh, probably right. the head of the TMC and also going to have power to name and veto uh, the FFC cabinet so to me or in my book that's not okay. a civilian role what this does it just gives the international community uh, to relax a little bit keep their interest with the TMC that they had built over the years and at the same time they respond to a popular movement Movement and they try right. to quell the streets, okay. and that's it. That's okay. not democracy. It's just getting off the radar. Okay. Very finally, Esam, you think it's a nice cuddly teddy bear, but Azaz says you are about to pick up a landmine. No, I never said it's a nice cuddly teddy bear. Maybe it's it's a it's a tiger. It's a, <laughs> it's a vicious uh, animal. But the thing is that when I talked about pragmatism, because, <laughs> because I, I, I live w inside, I mean, I know exactly what we have on our hands. We don't have that much. We, we have to work with what we have now. Now, if we're talking about negotiations, then we know that we cannot enforce our side of the story as easy as it sounds, as, as the lady says. We, we are in a situation where we are compelled to fight with what we have, with what, with what any instruments we have, uh, uh, irrespective of, 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 the, of the outcome. Now, the situation, the situation is irreversible. We chose to sit and talk and negotiate. And now we have a document on our hands. Okay. We believe that gradually we can, we can sustain what we have and this is very important, and we can build on it. This is, this is a strategy okay. that we are adopting. Okay, so we're going to give it... Uh, for okay. instance, the, 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 we're the, give it the, time the lady said that, that right. the, the TMC has... Yeah, listen, uh, Isam, I've got to move on, right? But we're going to give it yeah. the time yeah, it but, needs but, to see if it works. And we're going to have you back on the program, and uh, you guys can have this discussion again. We won't take our eyes off Sudan. I've got to move on, but I thank you all for joining us. Issam, Suleiman, and Azaz, thanks again.